of today's football were regarding Kuf B'Talut, Allah Tawfiq, Allah SWT lies our success. This is an extremely important topic, so I want us to pay extra attention to what I am about to say, in the Allah, by the permission of Allah. And this topic is long overdue, Allah And all the praise and the thanks belongs to Allah and Allah alone. Since many of us, especially living in this part of the world, have lost faith. And I say this with a heavy heart, that so many of us in this part of the world, with all of our freedoms, have lost faith. And there's no might, and there's no power except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why do I say this? It's because we are losing ourselves to the point that we have forgotten the purpose of our existence on this planet. Regardless if we're living here or our land of origin, Allah had told us with no uncertain terms. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create us for any other purpose except for his worship. So when we're talking about Kufr but Tabu, if I understand Allah had sent messengers for since the beginning of time. Allah wa Jalla sent them with this message. That we had sent messengers to every community to warn or to hover or to inspire or to inform their community that they must worship Allah. Allah alone. And they must Ashtanibu Ta'ud. Shaykh al-Islam bin Taymiyyah rahimahullah in explaining what is worship. He said ibadah, worship, is ism jami'ah. Yikulima yudhibu Allah wa radahu min qawl wa amal zahir wa batanam. That ibadah, worship, is a comprehensive verb action word from our statements and our actions that which we do and say openly and that which we have done and what we say inwardly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given us all free will and free choice to choose and to do what we like but I want what I would like to really speak about today is that we need to understand that this ta'ut is something which can and will creep into the hearts of any one of us. It is something which is dark and it creeps when we're unexpected and we do not understand how it happens unless and until we really can comprehend the purpose behind our existence on this planet. Now, what is Ta'ud? Allah told us that we have to make kufr with Ta'ud. Disbelief in Ta'ud. Ta'ud comes from the Arabic, which refers to an opponent, an idol, or anything that's in opposition to our Islam. And many people will say, it, even those who are involved with Da'wah, calling the non-Muslims to Islam, will say that Islam means peace, which is incorrect, because Islam is something which we will attain, and which we will arrive at after some time. What is Islam? Islam means peaceful submission and obedience to Allah by loving to follow the sunnah of Rasulullah as a result of following 
in submitting to the Quran and the authentic Sunnah of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we will be at peace at following and adhering sem wata. And as a result of our peaceful submission, Allah Azza wa Jal will give us entrance into Dar al Salam, which is Jannah, Dar al Abrar. And Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, Hamallah, stated in his book, Falafat al Asul, the three principles, the three fundamental principles, and it's regarding those questions, those three questions that will all be asked about in our graves. Man Rabbuk, Ma Dina, Man Who is your Lord? What is your deen, your lifestyle, your way of life, your religion, as they call it? And who was the one who was teaching you? Who were you following? Who was your prophet or messenger? He said that the greatest thing that Allah had sent to us is the command of whole Tawheed, which means singling out Allah SWT in His oneness and His uniqueness in our ibadah. And the greatest thing that Allah SWT had warned us against is shirk associating partners in that worship and to be away from its people. So Allah had mentioned in several places in his book, on a tongue, also on the tongue of the Messenger Wasallam, that we need to hold on to Tawheed and be away from shirk and its people. For example, by following the Rasul Wasallam, he is the best of examples in this path. So any of us who claim that we love Islam, which every Muslim would say, they might say, I'm not a good Muslim, but I love Islam. But the proof is in our actions, in how we adhere to the Sunnah of Rasulullah So, the real proof is in the ayah, which Allah just said in Al-Imran, verse number 31. قُلْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحِبُّكُمَ اللَّهَ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذَنُوبُكُمْ وَاللَّهُ فُرُّ رَحِيمٌ قُلْ أَعْتِيَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُ فِنْ تَوَلَّوْ فِنْ اللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْكَافِرِينَ Al-Aya Allah was telling his messenger وسلم, to say to the people if you truly love Allah then follow Muhammad وسلم. follow me and Allah as a result of you following Muhammad وسلم, then Allah will love you Allah again says, say to them, all atil la wa rasul, unconditionally. We must atil, obey and follow Allah and his messenger. For those who choose to turn away from the obedience of Allah and his messenger, then Allah does not like the disbelievers. So in this noble ayat, there are many ayat, but this ayat was known as the Ayat al Imtihan, the verse of the proof. For anyone who claims to be good, yet does not want to follow the Sunnah of Mustafa, as has been spoken on his tongue and has been ordered in the Quran, then they are lying in their claim. The Hassan al Basri, and among many of Salaf, scholars of the Salaf, they said that. Many people would come and claim to love Allah and His Rasul. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests them with this verse. So my dear Sulaiman, when we were to choose a way, a path, a tariqa, a methodology, a deen, a way of life, other than that of Islam, and how do we know we're following Islam? That is in the chorus of the Quran and the Sunnah Sahih of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then we might be setting up a ta'ud. If we're reminded that Ya Akhi, Ya Ukht, you are following a way which is in contradiction to the Quran and authentic Sunnah. And we say, Ya Akhi, this is what I've been upon, this is what I've been doing, and I feel good about it. Then we might be following a ta'ud. We might have been setting up a ta'ud. A different form, an idol, Idolatry within our hearts. Allah says in Surah Hazab, 
ولم ترى إلا الذين يزعمون أنهم آمنوا بما أنزل إليك وما أنزل من قبلك يريدون أن يتحاكموا إلى التاغوت وقد أمروا أن يكفروا به ويريدون الشيطان أن يذلوا ذلالا بعيدا الآية الله جل is asking the rhetorical question have you not seen those who claim that they believe or they have faith in that which was sent down to you in which was sent down before you but they wish to go for judgment to a ta'ud while they have been ordered to reject them the ta'ud when it is shaitan when it is indeed the shaitan that wishes to lead them far astray by way of these ta'ud in this verse allah wa jal in many verses allah wa jal is giving us a severe warning to those who claim to be a true follower of Islam, those who claim, those of us who make the claim that we love Allah and we love the Rasul and we love Islam, yet we rather refer to our customs, our traditions, and how we do things, and how we've been doing things in our home countries, while overlooking the adilla, the clear proofs and evidences in the Quran and Sunnah. Allah Muhammad said, if we do this, then we are what? Tahakul Ta'ud. And we're seeking a judgment from other than Allah and the Rasul. A lot of us will say that we love Islam. We love Rasulullah. But when the Sunnah is mentioned, when the Sunnah of the Rasul is mentioned, we say that's only Sunnah. That's not the, that's not far upon me. That's only Sunnah. We are the Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's refuge is sought. How is it that we say that we love Allah and we love his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa You love Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Yes. You hear and you see many Muslims getting passion, which we should. But when we are told to follow the sunnah, we say, yeah, that's not far. That's only sunnah. How are we going to know to practice anything in a deen and that's until, by way of the sunnah of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Hujjah says, why he sent all of the messengers. Allah Hujjah says, وَلَقَدْ بَعْثْنَا فِي كُلْ أُمَّةِ الرَّسُولٍ إِنْ عَبْدُ اللَّهُ وَشْرِبُ الْتَعُوْتِ He sent to every community messengers to tell them, worship Allah and Allah alone. وَشْرِبُ الْتَعُوْتِ We set it up ourselves and our businesses, our livelihoods, as a ta'ud. With this in mind, my dear son and man, how is it can we be doing kufr with ta'ud, rejecting and disbelieving in a ta'ud? For starters, we must reject every type of worship, respect, devotion to anything, to anything that comes in between our hearts and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything that comes in between us and practicing our deen. We don't know Allah until and unless we practice his deen. We want to implement his sharia by verbally rejecting such things. By holding any type of esteem to anyone or anything before and in front of the deen of Islam. That way we'll get to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if we put these things in front of Allah and in front of practicing the deen by way of our speech and our action and our intentions, we say that we love Allah and His Rasul, but within us we have a dislike for those who advise us that we're going against the deen. Many of us, we believe that shirk is just those who worship Islam. They do idol worship. No. These are the avenues, a ta'ud, are the avenues, those dark avenues which lead to shirk. It's not that anyone is saying that we shouldn't bow down to an idol. That is clear. And that is clear disobedience to Allah and His Rasul. But we're talking about a ta'ud. 
What is a tagut? Those little things that we're in the habit of doing and we're starting to love and we're starting to appreciate, but they're coming in the way of us and practicing our deen. My dear Basim and Imam, we have to understand that there are many forms of worship. There's many forms of respect and devotion and admiration that we have. And that is very common today, that people admire and have admiration and hold esteem celebrities. Many of us, we have a deep, profound love and appreciation for our job, our work, our show, our business. We love and we, and we appreciate brands like Balenciaga, although we know and it's now it's become clear that they are involved in things that are atrocious and hideous. Some just like child trafficking, to name the least. But still we want to wear that attire. The Prophet said, Man the have for one Whosoever imitates a people, and they are one of them. We love the brand, but we must hate it for the sake of Allah. Because of what it stands for. for because of what it represents. Some of us, we love a sheikh, we love his imam, but his fatawas are in opposition to the Quran and authentic sunnah on the way of the Salaf and the Salih, the pious predecessors. So that way, we have to leave the sheikh. Yeah. We have to leave his rulings. We have to look for what is sahih. Many of us, we follow a certain Sufi tariqah, or we love this Baba in the subcontinent. Although what he is calling us to is in haraf, ways that are going far away from Islam. But when I go to him, my problem gets solved. But Allah says that that is the shaitan that wants to lead us far away, far astray from the straight path. So my dear Prophet what did Allah just say about obedience to him as many of us which we should have love and respect for ourselves for our elders for our parents we should have love and respect for the fact that we, we can earn and we can get business and we can improve and increase on our sustenance alhamd but at the same time, we must keep things in perspective of the deen. Are these things hindering us from being a good, upright, practicing Muslims? When we know that Kufra Qutahud, it takes shaja, courage. And when we look at the example of Ibrahim alayhi salam, when he was a small boy, Allah he tells us that we have an excellent example in Ibrahim And what did he do as a young lad? He was given rushed. He was right-minded. And everybody knows the story of Ibrahim That's how he started. That's where he began, with being right-minded and thinking clear to the point that he would allow his environment to corrupt his fitra. Many of us, we like to take our children and put them into Islamic, as we say, air quotes, Islamic schools. But in actuality, there are Muslim schools because we don't see Islam being implemented. We see some version of Islam. Like we're afraid for our children in the public school system, so we take them to Islamic schools. But what are they learning? What is being taught? What is being apprehended? What are they catching? What are they gaining? Ibrahim alayhi salam, he was one who was given rush. When anything comes in between us and our wanting to practice Islam, that's where we must draw the line. Remember how Allah speaks about Ibrahim alayhi salam and how he was a good example, Hanif, to his people. What did he say? Allah says, 
اسقط الحسنة في إبراهيم والذين معه إذ قال لقومه إن براء منكم مما تعبدون من دون الله كفرنا بكم وبدا بيننا وبينكم عداوة البغضاء أبدا حتى تؤمنون بالله وحده Allah says that we have an excellent example, Uswat al Hasan, an excellent example in Ibrahim and those with him. When he said to his people that I am free from you and what you worship other than Allah. I am free from you, he says. And that and what you worship other than Allah. Kafar nabikum. And I disbelieve in you and what you associate with Allah and what has now become an adawa enmity and rancor and hatred has come between us until you worship Allah alone so my dear Muslim man many of us have a very abnormal mindset when it comes to this kufr bitawud when we say that I like the person, but I dislike what they do. We cannot separate the person from their actions, nor shall we put ourselves in a position where we're associating with some people because we're from the same background, the same country, so we have a, a fraternity with them, but they're doing things which are alien and against Islam. We need to be careful, my dear Muslim man. Allah Jalla says, "La ikra fi din qad bayna rush min al ghay, fama yufur bi taghur wa yuqmin bi Allah qad amstasi bi awrat al wusta nam fusala walaha Allah sami alim." There should be no compulsion in the deen. What is deen? Our lifestyle, our way of life. Verily, the right path has been made clear from the wrong path. So whosoever disbelieves yukfur bi taghur and believes in Allah then they have held they have the firmest hand hold may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to hold on to Islam Amen. Bismillah Assalamu ala Rasulullah <clears throat> topic of today's talk by the Guardian, Kufr with Ta'ud, that we must disbelieve in all of those avenues, those issues, those things that come in between us and our practicing Islam. Every one of us as Muslims, we must comprehend that Allah SWT is our one and only object of worship. We must single out our worship for Allah, wahtahu, Him and Him alone. And we must remove ourselves and things that may come in between our improving our relationship with Rabb al the Lord of the mighty throne. We love our freedoms, especially in this part of the world. We love our jobs. We love to be involved in sports. We love and respect our parents and our teachers. <coughs> but if I, if we sense that they may be undermining my commitment towards Islam, that's where we must draw the line. That's where we must Draw the line. Remember how Ibrahim addressed his people. Kafarna bikum, wa bada bainana wa bainaku ma'dawatun, ul bagda u abadan, hatta tuk minuna bilai wahtahu. Ibrahim he said to his people, I disbelieve in whatever you're upon, and as a result, has started between us and you animosity and hatred. Until and unless you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah alone. So my dear Muslim man, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said the same thing. He said, There shall be no obedience 
to the creation and disobedience to the creator. In the matatufil, ma'ruf, that obedience can be only in that which is good and upright. Let us appreciate our freedom to be a Muslim. Let us appreciate the fact that we are free to practice our deen. We are free to be a good Muslim teacher, a good Muslim business owner, with the ability to expand in our business and earn a lot of wealth. But we should not let that get in the way of our practicing Islam, of being a Muslim that loves and appreciates the freedom to be a Muslim. Many of us, I'll leave us with this, many of us are spoiling our children, Ma'asif Shadid. So many of us are spoiling our children, why? Because we are cowardly to the point that we don't want them to spoil their freedoms, especially here in this part of the world, in Canada in America. We don't want them to spoil their freedoms by being an outwardly practicing Muslim. My dear Basim and Iman, many of us are spoiling our children by only bringing them to their home countries to do a thing called saint worship. <coughs> we bring them back home so that they can visit the graves of saints. I'm making air quotes, so-called saints. We're bringing them to our home countries to visit a baba so that they can do to baruch, to seek blessing from these people, from these evil individuals. Why? Because we want to get betterment in our wealth. We want to get a blessing in our business endeavors. We want to have more in terms of our marriage. We want to have betterment in our marriage. We want to fix our husband, or we want to fix our wives. We want our child to have a good education. My daughter is not getting married. So we go back home to see a baba, or a so-called sheikh. La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. These people are trying to lead us away from a ta'ur. These are avenues to the shaitan. And I want to leave us with what Allah Mujah says in Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah wa la dhilin amanu yukhrijuhu min al-ghulamat ila al-nur wa la dhilin kafru awliyaahum al-ta'ur yukhrijuhu min al-nur ila al-ghulamat wa laik ashaab al-nari hum fiha khalidun. Al-ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the wali the guardian, protector of those who have Iman, faith. He brings them out of the darkness into the light. But as for those who disbelieve, their awliya, their friends, their guardians, their protectors, their supporters of the ta'ud, the false deities, those false sheikhs, those false babas, those fake saints, they only bring them from the light into the darkness and they are the dwellers of the hell and they will be there forever may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to be those who hold on to the deen and hold on to the deen to the point that we can make look for the bit ta'ud disbelieve in those false deities may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of those bless all of us who are involved in business in tijara and make us a arba yani our increase in our sadaqat. May Allah Azza wa Jalla give us more increase in our business so that we can make sadaqat to those who are in need, those who want. May Allah Azza wa Jalla help those who are in school. May Allah Azza wa Jalla protect the students who are in school and look over them. May Allah Azza wa Jalla have mercy on, our, on those who are sick and those who are suffering. May Allah Azza wa Jalla give the shifa to our sister who is in the hospital right now. She's fighting. She's suffering with pneumonia. Ya Rabbul Alameen, Ya Izzat, Ya Shafi, Ya Shafi. Oh, oh, the one who gives the cure. Cure our sister who was in the hospital at this moment with pneumonia. Give her the shifa, ya shifa. Oh Allah, help our brothers and sisters who are struggling in Afghanistan, in Kashmir, in Palestine, especially in the Gaza Strip. Ya Rabbul Alameen, illa wa alaykum sallam al nabi ya ladina amanu.